Rebuilding a model steam plant, part 44. Removing the condenser oil trap to prepare and paint it, using self-etch primer for the first coat, plus making yet another leather drive belt. The condenser is not yet fixed to the baseboard, but in order to remove it, I need to take off the chimney. This allows access to the piece of pipe with a nut on the end, which in turn screws into a PM Research elbow just underneath the chimney, on the outside of the boiler casing. In this clip I've loosened the union nuts on the condenser's input and I'm removing the pipes that are connected to the condenser. As the condenser isn't screwed down to the baseboard because I haven't drilled the holes yet, it's a simple job to lift it out of the way. What I'm doing here is removing the extension pipe that fits on the tap at the top of the condenser. This drain tap is to drain the condensate periodically. The rest of the piping simply unscrews from the adapter that I made that fits onto the pipe that is soldered into the tank. In this clip, as I unscrew the piping adapter, you can see how effective Loctite 542 is as a thread sealant. It almost looks to be as good as PTFE tape, but it's less messy. With all the piping out of the way, the next part of the job is to thoroughly score all of the copper using a suitable piece of coarse emery cloth. The reason for that is to scratch the copper badly, which gives a key for the paint. Even the etch primer that I'm using is really no good for copper, it's designed for steel, and paint does not like sticking to copper or brass. But I'm pleased to say that the brand of self-etch primer that I use does actually stick very well to most things. As I'm also going to paint the inlet adapter, which is a T-piece, and the two elbows that connect to it, I'm scoring those two with the emery cloth. There are, of course, certain parts of this condenser I don't want to paint, like the brass cap and the tap on the top. So here I'm using some masking tape to build up a shield around it. Yes, I could have taped a polythene bag over the top, but this is more fun. And also, the paint tends to stick to the masking tape, whereas if you use a plastic bag or a polythene bag, the paint flakes off and goes all over the place when you remove it. However, if you use masking tape, make sure you get every hole covered. I went a little bit over the top and used quite a lot, yet I can still see a way in. This was fixed though by using even more masking tape, and now it looks like it's sealed. Here's a good tip, don't bother using masking tape on the threads, just use some silicone rubber tubing. After I made sure that everything that I needed to mask was masked, I took the condenser into the outer part of the workshop. This is an aerosol can cap, and it's an ideal thing to rest the condenser on, because the board that I place over the brazing hearth where I do the painting is now thoroughly covered in paint and it's all a bit loose and flaky. It might be an idea to write down the address on this tin if you want to buy any of this stuff. Believe me, it's the best that I've ever used. It's definitely not a good idea to breathe in this stuff. I'm painting in the outer part of the workshop next to a door which is wide open. The temperature is actually a bit low for painting, particularly with the door open, and I don't like the idea of heating the part that you're painting. I prefer to do it this way. Generally, the slower the paint dries, the better the adhesion. In a similar manner, I suppose, to the 24-hour versions of two-pack epoxy resins over the five-minute version, which doesn't seem to stick too well to parts. For many years, I used to build and fly radio-controlled model aircraft, and I did notice when examining the wreckages, because there were wreckages from time to time, that the five-minute epoxy wasn't sticking very well to the wood. It's important when painting like this not to get any sags or runs, and believe me, it's very easy to do that. That's why I'm keeping the part moving, a quick spray, a bit of a rotation, and another spray, and so on and so forth, until eventually it's completely covered, and there are no runs visible. Although with the first coat, it's not that important, you can sand away any runs or sags. Back now to the heated environment of the inner workshop. I wasn't happy with the first drive belt that I made because it was too wide, so I made a different one using a piece of black leather that I had. 
I cut it into a strip, chamfered the ends and stuck it together with cyanoacryl adhesive or superglue. I describe the making of a belt in episode 5 of Useful Model Steam Engine Design Ideas. Here's an excerpt from that particular episode. A leather drive belt to connect the Stuart number 10 to the dynamo. The dynamo has a crown pulley and as you can see the original belt that I made the other day stays on very well even when I short circuited the output terminals to apply a sudden heavy load the belt didn't fall off. I have some sheets of black leather I'm going to cut one of these up to make a drive belt. This stuff is different, it's a bit knobbly on the top surface, not as smooth as the brown, but as an experiment I thought it would be a good idea to cut this up first, rather than trim down the brown belting. That's the main thing. The black belt wasn't successful the day after it fell off, so here I am trimming down a piece of the brown belting, and it's really difficult to do. I would think it's a good idea to clamp this very firmly before you cut it because it moves around as it's been cut. And don't forget how sharp the Stanley knife is. I'm chamfering the edges using the piece of emery cloth stapled to the card. And here's the result. When chamfering these drive belts, it's important to chamfer each end on the opposite side. All I need to do now is apply some super glue. It's cool in the workshop today, and the super glue didn't grab as well as it did on the previous attempt. But then again, on that day, it was warmer. To make sure it sticks properly, I'm clamping it together with this plastic clamp and leaving it for 24 hours. My friend Andrew Stone of Black Orchard Books is sending me some leather of the correct width. All I'm trying to do is find the best method to make it stick together and be the correct length. I've bought two staplers, a large one and a small one. I'm going to try holding the belt together using staples. But that's it for now. I'd just like to say, as I always do, stay safe, stay healthy. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. I have no connection with Black Orchard Books, other than a very satisfied customer, and I really recommend looking on the website to see the range of things Andrew actually makes. He's very creative and very imaginative and will help you with the design of the object that you require. Highly recommended. Please don't forget to check out the website, you will not be disappointed. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.